morning, Man Hour Nation. Welcome to live, raw, and uncut NFL talk. August 31st edition, Thursday edition, right here at YouTube.com. And of course, Facebook.com. We got Factor Crap Thursday lining up. Chris Jones is back. Act? Maybe? Kind of? But first. And now, Mike's Thoughts. As we dive into the Hard Knocks episode number four, it has been a real, honestly, it's been, it's kind of been a brush of breath there to see like Aaron Rodgers, right? It, it, it's like, I know they're portraying him to be some larger than life figure, right? And I, I, I enjoy it. I have really enjoyed this Hard Knocks season so far. But one person that has not liked it is Giants defensive end Jihad Ward. He said he has, quote, been irked by Hard Knocks portrayal of Aaron Rodgers in his tiff in the final preseason game of the 2023 season. Basically, what happened is Ward got up into Aaron Rodgers' face and Aaron Rodgers says, don't poke the bear. Next play, Aaron Rodgers throws a nice little dot to Garrett Wilson and touchdown celebration and cured, right? My man, Jihad Ward, you have to understand how movies work. Yes, Hard Knocks is a, uh, what's you going to call it? A reality TV show, right? It is a TV show that we are becoming fond of. But every TV show, every reality TV show, every movie has to have a villain. Has to have a guy that is just, uh, what's that working, looking for? The antagonist. And you are the antagonist. Aaron Rodgers is the hero. Aaron Rodgers is this larger than life figure. Aaron Rodgers is the man, the myth, the legend. You have to understand that, man. You have to understand that. So uh, stop getting irked by this. Oh, Aaron Rodgers crap. What a man. Just shut up at the end of the day. Shut up. Move on. Go about your business. And to say that, uh, let me pull his quote quote out for you. He says, it's cool though. That's how they roll. I think we play them soon. It is what it is. If it is what it is, and if you don't care, why are you saying you irked by it? Why are you saying that you like you like you're upset by it? I personally haven't watched the episode yet. I'm gonna watch it today with the other half. But I I'm intrigued to watch this. To say that he's irked? Come on, man. You're better than that. Aren't you? Whatever gets his name in the paper, right? Whatever gets his name in the paper at the end of the day. Cue that intro. Every time, no. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the Dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know what I'm coming to the stage. Sports talking what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that it's us when we talking about sports. Uh-huh. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh-huh. Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like a theater, but Nike mm-hmm. just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know, you know what's man. going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No man. LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. All Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live, all three speaks go. Hey. 
And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckhaster here with the Man Hour. Show it over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page or check out the blog section as well. New blogs drop each and every day over there at manhourradio.com. And, of course, at manhour.coke.com as well. Links are in the description, guys. Sit back and buckle up because we got a fact or crap Thursday edition right here. One week until the NFL season is officially here. But show lineup for today. Chiefs GM Brett Veach. It's hopeful Chris Jones will be back week one. Chris Ballard says Jonathan Taylor and their issue sucks, but relationships are repairable. I guess maybe Joe Burrow has officially returned to practice. Kyle Shanahan is not interested in trading Nick Bosa, but we'll see what happens there. And of course, contract talks for Mr. Tua Tagovailoa has stopped. They're like, ah, we'll worry about that in the, at the end of the season. We'll worry about that off season. Uh oh. Red flag alert. Red flag alert. But guys, it is Thursday edition. And tomorrow, tomorrow, we break down the teams. We start giving you the official win loss records of the season. I'm going to come out with my week one power rankings. We got a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff happening 100% here. But first, we got to get into the lead block of the day. So starting off with the lead block, Arizona Cardinals tight end Zach Ertz is unsure that he will play week one. There's a lot of uncertainty happening in Arizona. They don't know who their starting quarterback is. They don't know if Kyler Murray is going to come back. Hell, Zach Ertz is going to be the man, the myth, the legend down there in Arizona. Josh Dobbs, Clayton, Clayton Toon need a nice tight tie, tie end. And Zach Ertz missing week, week one. Go ahead and mark that L up for them 100%. Hell, two, three wins. All You got to get everything again. Anyways, Carolina Panthers have waived former third-round pick Matt Carroll a couple days ago. It is officially Bryce Young time in Carolina. Out with the old, in, in, in with the new, Matt Carroll is gone. Texas right tackle Titus Howard is still recovering from a broken hand that he suffered during training camp and will likely miss week one. The Texans already have issues protecting C.J. Stroud as is. They already have issues running the ball as is. Missing Titus Howard, going to suck. Chiefs wide receiver Clarius Tooney should be ready by week one after he suffered a knee issue during training camp. Actually, it wasn't even during camp. It was during warm-ups. He was running some sprints like, oh, my knee hurts. Should be back by week, 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 week one. This is this is good news for the Kansas City Chiefs as their, re- their receiver core does I mean it, it's good, but it, and, and it just... Something, something kind of just doesn't feel right about it right now. Saints cornerback Mashawn Lattimore should be ready by week one. This is huge for the New Orleans Saints. The Saints have kind of been on this team that they've 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 they've, they've, they've kind of been this team where like really good or really bad, right? Where are they going to land? The addition of Mashawn Mashawn Lattimore back, great defense. Holy cow! I'm kind of excited for the Saints. I'm kind of excited for the Saints. I'm kind of seeing where they like to go this season. But, guys, there's been a lot of transactions, a lot of a lot of practice squad player signings. Bailey Zappi's been signed with the uh, Patriots. If you're curious of what your team did there, guys, head over to manhourradio.com. We do have a complete list of the roster, all the practice squad signings, everything that's happened over there. Head over to manhourradio.com, and we will get it. there's information out there for you. We have Jay Julian in the chat here. Jay Julian with a nice long post to start the show. I love it, Jay. Keep those coming, man. But he says, if Jones doesn't suit up for the Chiefs defense, can't get to Jared Joff. It's going to be a very, very long night. I assure you the Lions defense is going to get to Mahomes. It's He is even in football shape if he comes back. So uh, let's let's go ahead and dive right into Factor Crap Tuesday because Jay wants to know about Chris Jones. Jay says, my man Chris Jones, even if he doesn't suit up, the defense cannot get to Jared Goff. Okay. When we let's 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 collect our thoughts here, Jay. 
Let's collect our thoughts. I will answer this question. I will answer this question thoroughly, but let me get through the little rift here, right? So Kansas City Chiefs, for, for, first off, first off, first off, this is factor crap segment here. Factor crap is very, very simple. We put in a statement like Jay just said there, and I will tell you if it's a fact or if it in, indeed is a crap. It is cut and dry. Factor crap, do I agree? Do I disagree with it? I want you guys to play along in the chat as well. So, Kansas City Chiefs general manager Brett Veach is hopeful that Chris Jones will return week one. As you guys know, Chris Jones has been sitting out. He's been doing a holdout. His $10 million that he's supposed to get paid this year isn't quite enough money for him, even though he, quote, has enough money to sit out until week eight. With that being said, he's looking for about a $20 million Aaron Donald type of money, right? $21, $22, $23 million a season. And like I said, he is prepared to sit out until week eight per his Twitter. Quote, he can't afford it. So with that being said, fact or crap, do the Kansas City Chiefs need Chris Jones come week one? So obviously... The Kansas City Chiefs pass rush has been sus all preseason long. Key word there is preseason. Secondly, they did add a nice little piece from the Raiders. They brought in some assurance on that defensive front to add a little bit of pass rush, right? We do understand that the Kansas City Chiefs defense always takes a little time for it to manufacture and be good, right? However, this is a complete crap. Yes, Chris Jones would be nice to have. I would love to have me some Chris Jones come week one. I would love to see Jared Goff on his back play after play after play. But we do not need that pass rush to fluster Chris Jones. We do not need that pass rush to win the game over the Detroit Lions. When I say we, I mean the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, it would be a lot easier, right? It would be a hell of a lot easier to win with Chris Jones. So, fact or crap, the Kansas City Chiefs need Chris Jones come week one. This is a crap. This is a crap because this is not the Super Bowl for the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this is the Super Bowl for the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions have put this game up on a pedestal. My man Luke G is going in on it. Stop sleep on us. This is our year. Yada, yada, yada. Put everything in this week one game, Luke G. Detroit Lions fans, put everything into this week one game. The Kansas City Chiefs don't care. It's just week one. We have... 17 more weeks to worry about. 16 more games to worry about. This is not a make or break for Chris Jones or for the Kansas City Chiefs come week one. This is crap. This is crap. We do not need Chris Jones come week one. Now, to Jay's point here, he says, if Jones doesn't suit up and the Kansas City Chiefs defense can't get to Jared Goff, it's going to be a very, very long night. Now, I do agree with this first statement to an extent. If the Kansas City Chiefs defense cannot get to Chris Jones, obviously, or sorry, uh, if the Kansas City Chiefs defense cannot get to Jared Goff, obviously it's going to be a lot harder to defend for seven, eight, nine seconds. However, on the Detroit Lions side of the ball, on their offensive side of the ball, they have their leading receiver is going to be out. He is suspended, right? He likes to gamble on him on on the games in the locker room, so he is going to be out, right? Um, uh, 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 Amaraz St. Brown is questionable for the game. He has a little lingering hamstring issue. They don't know if he's even going to be prepared to ready to play week one. So talk about in shape. Is St. Brown going to be in shape to be any work? So that leaves you Marvin Jones Jr. The lone receiver out there. 
Oh, you guys don't know who Marvin Jones Jr. is? Fifth round pet draft pick back in 2012, entering what his 11th season in the NFL. Watch out for that guy. Oh man, <laughs> Father Time called. Hello, man. Can't, can't can't even run 20 yards without huffing and puffing. So yes, I understand the hype around the Detroit Lions offense. I understand it, but with Jamison Williams out and St. Brown questionable. He, he probably will play. We still got like a week, right? But Jameson Williams alone does n- being out. The receiver core for the Detroit Lions does not scare me at all. I will take the Kansas City Chiefs check in secondary over the Detroit Lions wide receiver core right now without Jameis w- w- Williams. You can give Jared Goff 30 seconds out there. My boys are going to be just fine. My boys as the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be just fine back there guarding a subpar wide receiver core with a average quarterback. Justin Reed is going to eat. Trent McDuffie is going to eat. Did you guys forget that we have one of the sneakiest best cornerbacks in the league into Legereus Need? Watch out, guys. So, obviously getting pressure on Jared Goff will make our job a lot easier. By not getting pressure on Jared Goff, we'll make the game a lot closer. Now, this is a statement that I like. Jay says, I assure you the Lions defense is going to get to Mahomes. The Lions defense does look very, very good. Adrian Hutcherson, right? I love me some Jack Campbell. Honestly, that whole little front seven core that they got... With uh, Adrian Hutchison, Jack Campbell, uh, Alex, uh, little long-haired white white boy, white hair, right? The, they they all pretty got a pretty good little thing going. Then you had C.J. Garner Johnson to to the mix and Cameron Sutton. Yes, their defense is good. Defense is very very good. However. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to exploit your interior. McNeil, Bugs, two of your guys' interior linemen right there on the defensive lines or on the Detroit Lions side of the ball. Isaiah Pacheco is going to eat, baby. This is not going to be an aired out game for Patrick Mahomes and the boys. This is going to be a grinded out 30 rushing attempts. It's going to be nasty. Going to be nasty. Now, the last statement here. Will Chris Jones be in shape? This was a perfect question that I was going to ask. Now, Chris Jones obviously hasn't played all preseason. No training camp, no whatever, right? We've seen it. Players hold out all training camp, miss a game or or two, right? And then they want to come come back and be, I'm going to go 110% and they tear an Achilles. They... Tara ACL. So hopefully Andy Reid and the boys, the coaching staff, has kind of been in Chris Jones's ear. It's like, hey, look at what happened to some of these players. Um, trying to think of Des Bryant, right? Des Bryant didn't play for like six regular season games, get signed by the, I think it was the Saints. Torrey's a key, like the very first, very first play. So, yes, obviously, shape is going to be a question for Chris Jones. He will, If he is back by week one, he probably will be on a pitch count, hopefully. Hopefully some type of smartness going on. But great, great uh, uh, statement there, uh, Jay. Hoffy is in the chat, says they don't need, they don't, they don't need Chiefs. I think he means Jones. They don't need Jones until midseason. Let him come in nice and fresh, and they have no away division games. Mahomes is undefeated week one. They'll be just fine. This is an absolute fact, Hoffy. When you look at the first six weeks of the Kansas City Chiefs schedule, they 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 do play the Jets, right? They do play the Bears. Everybody look out for the Bears, right? They do play the Jaguars. They do play the Vikings and the Broncos. But really, 
the Chiefs really only got to worry about the Broncos in that game. I don't care about the Jets. As a Chiefs fan, I could give two shits less about the New York football Jets. They're going to do Jet things, and they're going to implode by midseason. The only game that I'm worried about is the Denver Broncos. That's week six. Week seven, play the L.A. Chargers. Both division games at home. Patrick Mahomes has never lost a home division game. Chris Jones says he'll be back by week eight. Play the Denver Broncos week eight at Denver. That's when the Kansas City Chiefs schedule gets a little, gets, gets a little rougher, right? Play the Dolphins, Eagles, Packers, Bills, Patriots, Bengals, Chargers to end the CC season. So, yes, Hoffa, you are spot on. First six, seven weeks of the season, who gives a rat's ass if Chris Jones is there or not? It would be nice to have him, but you are right. Let him come in week eight. Let him ease into that Denver Broncos game. We're going to beat the stupid-ass ponies anyways. Let him come back, to, uh, travel to L.A. Nice, fresh game. Ease him back. And then week 10 and on, pedal to the metal, baby. Super Bowl bound 100%. Katie is in the chat, and she says, crap. Absolute crap. We don't need Chris Jones come week one, and you are right, Katie. Let the people hear it. Let the people hear it, Katie. What's up? What's up, Katie? Glad you're here today. Jay says, St. Brown is a leading receiver, and he's fine. Huh, huh, huh. St. Brown was the leading leading receiver for the uh, Detroit Lions last season. Yes, 100% correct. The also the same Detroit Lions team that missed the playoffs last season. The same Detroit Lions team that had a losing record last season. The same Detroit Lions team that went two and six in the first eight weeks of the season. The same Detroit Lions team that everybody thought was going to go high, 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 me included, and they flat out shit the bed. This is what is different between last year and this year for the Detroit Lions. This year, the Detroit Lions are the team that is up on this pedestal. Everybody is expecting them to be good. Everybody is shooting their arrows at the Detroit Lions each and every game. They are being hunted each and every week. They have that bullseye on their back. Last season, was anybody talking about the Detroit Lions after week two? Absolutely not. Everybody, myself included, was jumping off that bandwagon. We're like, oh, the Detroit Lions, what is going on over there? Like over there? Then they started rumble off a couple games, right? They kind of snuck up on some people. Easy ass schedule, right? They had let's let's just be honest. They had an easy ass schedule, those six, seven games that they rattled off. Easiest second half schedule in the NFL in 2022. The easiest, Jay. So, difference between last year Detroit Lions is they were the one doing the hunting. They were the one shooting the arrows. They didn't have to show up every week and give 110%. One week they could give 110%, and then the next week they could give like 50%, 66%. Like, ah, my arrow gets up there. It gets up there. It is what it is. We're expected to lose. This year, every game they have to show up and give 110%. They have to give 110%. And if they don't, they'll get knocked down off that pedestal. So, yes, St. Brown may have been the leading receiver on a bad team. Beastie Comb is in the chat. What's up, BC? He says, Chris Jones will be back in week one in Chicago. <laughs> Everybody's going to to Chicago, right? Let me ask you this, BC. If Chris Jones gets traded to the Chicago Bears, what kind of trade value is Chris Jones warranted for the Chicago Bears? Two first-round picks, a couple third-round picks. Are you going to give up a receiver? What is the trade value for a player like Chris Jones for your Chicago Bears? And let me tell you this. Even if you do pick up one of the most prolific pass rushers, one of the best nose tackles in the game in Chris Jones, 
That does not improve the Chicago Bears at all this season. The Chicago Bears are still a five-win team at best. I said it. Nothing about the Chicago Bears is impressing me this offseason. Oh, they throw really good screen passes. <laughs> oh, good job, guys. Good job. J uh, Justin Fields threw a three-yard pass <laughs> to DJ Moore, and DJ Moore kind of zigzagged his way through a bunch of grocery baggers now. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hoffy in the chat. Scene. Shut, shut, shut up, Combsy. You smoking rocks, bud. <laughs> David is in the house. He says, Charger fan in the house. What's up, David? Hope you're having a grand old morning out there on the West Coast. My man wakes up at 6 o'clock in the morning and comes on the man hour and talks his shit. <laughs> Brian Branch. Not for sure what you're saying there, uh, Jay. Brian Branch. I, oh, oh, Okay. <laughs> Got it. Scrolling through these comments here. Brandon Combs says, week one in the NFL, anyone can beat anyone's. Bears beat San Francisco week one last season, and then they won two games for the rest of the seasons. Lions win week one. Chiefs go 14-3. and Lions finish 8-9. Eight, eight to nine. Combs, this is the smartest thing you've said in 16 years that I've known you. No, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. But let's flash back to that Bears game. Uh, first of all, when we flash back to the Bears game week one, it was a complete shit show, right? Trey Lance looked like dog poop. It was raining. I couldn't even see the 50-yard line. Uh, I mean, but but yes, you were right. We, week one, anybody can win, right? It's basically what team is, is motion shape when it comes down to. What team is in shape come week one, and then, you know, week two, week three, the rest of the season kind of pans out. Week one is basically, can you live up to the excitement? Can you live up to the hype that your team is building, right? Like, I get it. Uh, so I, I, I do concur with this to, a, to an extent, right? Beastie says, Chris Jones to Chicago for Darnell Moody and a fourth-round pick. You are smoking crack, man. That is the uh, go-to line here on like on the man hour. Apparently, like every, like everybody thinks we're on drugs. They thinks I'm on drugs. Combs. First of all, we don't want no Darnell Moody. Is he is he even healthy? In a fourth round pick. Let's say that does happen. Let's say that does happen. I will jump off the Kansas City Chiefs team so fast. I'll be tearing down my flags. I'm kidding. She's kingdom for life. But Darnell Mooney on the fourth round pick, that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen at all. Casey Morgan is in the chat. What's up, Casey? Hope, hope you're having a grand old day as well, dude. He says, Jones knows what he's doing. If he does come week one, he will be ready. If not, he wasted a lot of money holding out and to be traded and benched. First of all, Obviously, they are professional athletes, right? They know how to train. They know how to be in shape. But Casey, as a football player myself, I'm sure you played the game or played some type of sport as well, baseball, football, et cetera, right? You can, you can think you are in shape. You can run a mile in seven minutes. You can run a 40-yard dash in 4.5 set seconds. You are not huffing and puffing when you're in stadium stairs, right? But there is a difference between game shape and in shape. Let me repeat that. There's a difference between being in shape and in game shape. There is a reason why high school players, college players, NFL players, week one, they always cramp. It can be 60 degrees outside, beautiful, nice breeze going, not a cloud in the sky. You're still going to cramp. Because there's a difference between being in game shape and in shape. He does know what he's doing, but they're not going to bench him. They're not going to trade him. There is a reason why the Kansas City Chiefs decided to let Tyreek Hill basically walk away. Yes, they got a bunch of, a bunch of draft capital in return, but they knew a Chris Jones payday was coming. This is why Brett... Veach is one of the best GMs in the NFL. He knew this was coming. He was planning for the future. 
a good person, a good leader looks two days ahead. A great leader looks two years ahead, five years ahead. That's why Brett Veach is one of the best GMs in the league. He's looking four, five, six years ahead. He's not looking what's right in front of him. He's looking down the road. He knew this day was coming, and that's why there is money to out there that you can bring Chris Jones and pay him in. Buck slobbing on Cobb and Ob because he strokes the Chiefs. Look, man, we just speak real here, Combsy. You know how it is. <laughs> so Hoffy says, you mean Detroit didn't win the Super Bowl last season? <laughs> oh, that's right. It's only week 17 at Green Bay. Lions will be the Lions. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. Why are the cap? Why are the Pats keeping Matt Jones at QB one? I don't understand it. So let's let's talk about this, Casey. So obviously, Bill Belichick loves him some Mac Jones, or or hear hear me out. He wants to f the Patriots as much as he can because this is his last year in the NFL. He's like, you know what? Stick it to the man a, a little bit. No, I'm I'm totally kidding. I think um, Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick have a very nice working relationship but let's look at past quarterbacks in the new england patriots aka tom brady (laughs) what made tom brady so successful now i know down in tampa bay he got to fling the rock all over right he got to throw it down the ball 60 yards and do this and do that yada 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 but at the end of the day in new england Under a Bill Belichick ran team, Bill O'Brien was there, right? Or you can say Josh McDaniels, whoever, whoever the offensive coordinator was. The simple fact of the matter is that nickel and diamond down the field is what the New England Patriots excel at. That is what a Bill Belichick offense excels at. So Bailey Zappi, Malik Cunningham are not those nickel and dime I'm going to take what the defense gives me type of quarterback. Mac Jones is. I think Mac Jones is perfectly happy throwing for three times in a game. Buffalo Bills, right? They threw, what, three times that whole game, right? They're perfectly happy doing what it takes to win the game. Bailey Zappi, you have to realize that out here at Western Kentucky as a hilltopper, he set NCAA records for passing. Did Mac Jones do that? No. So I think that is why they kept Mac Jones is because he fits the system. He's a great system quarterback, and he's going to do good things for the New England Patriots this season. And when Colt McCoy gets signed by the New England Patriots here in the next couple hours, I said it, in the next couple hours, Colt McCoy will be a New England Patriot. Mark it down, clip it, do whatever you got to do. He's going to have a great mentor, and you're going to see a very big increase in Mac Jones this season. I think Mac Jones will have a good season this year, but I don't think the record's going to reflect it, unfortunately. I am not very happy about what they're doing this offseason. I had him go from like second down to last place team in the East. Spoiler alert. But Colts general manager Chris Ballard says, the issue with Jonathan Taylor sucks. But relationships are repairable. Everything is repairable, he says. So, guys, fact or crap, after being put on the pup list, physically unable to perform, the Colts, ownership, general manager, front office, and Jonathan Taylor can repair their relationship, and Jonathan Taylor will be a Colt moving forward. Fact or crap. So when we think about this, When we think about this, we have to wrap our heads around this situation. The issue with Jonathan Taylor was not with the general manager. It was not with the coach. It was not with the amount of playing time that he was getting. It was strictly with the owner, Jim Ursay. Because Jim Ursay could not keep his mouth shut and... He said, he said, he said, if we die tomorrow, the NFL will move on without us. 
ultimate smack in the face. When you want this stud running back to come play for you, you say something like that. Come on, man. Be smarter than that. Now, I do agree with Chris Ballard. that saying that all relationships are repairable. But with that being said, as relationships are repairable, you are always looking for the next domino to drop. Now, you might be happy. You might be putting on a clown face and smiling, right? But deep down, you're looking for the knife to come back in your back. You are looking for them to go cheat on you again. You're looking for them to do this, this, and this, and this. And the paranoia gets to you, and you are definitely not your full potential self. So as I do think Jonathan Taylor will be a Colt all season long, as I do think that the Colts will ultimately get Jonathan Taylor on the field, this relationship is not repairable. The only way this relationship can be totally 100% repairable is Jonathan Taylor does eventually move on and maybe come come back later down 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 the road. So with that being said, it is a fact that I do think they they can like kind of mend their relationship. They can get on common ground. They can get we can be friends, right? We're not going to get married. We're not going to be dating again, but we can be friends. And if we win, we can be closer friends. If we get to the Super Bowl, we can be BFS, but once the season's over, I'm not going to call you or text you until you need me, right? So that is how I feel the relationship with Jonathan Taylor and the Colts are going to be. It is a cordial relationship at best. We will communicate if we have to, but otherwise, yeah. I'm not going to call you when I need to borrow a ladder, right? (laughs) So, guys, let me know. Do you think Jonathan Taylor will be a New England, or not New England, an Indianapolis Colt this season, or will be he eventually move on? So, I saw a couple comments here. Yada, yada, yada. BC says, Jonathan Taylor will be back week one. Wait for it, wait for it in Chicago. Okay. So by the Colts placing Jonathan Taylor on the pup list, the physically unable to perform list, he cannot be traded. He cannot be activated. He cannot set foot on the practice field for four weeks. So week five is the only time, the closest time that we can see Jonathan Taylor on the field or in a new uniform. So right there, BC Combs, that shoots you in the foot, that shoots down your Colt thing. Get that out of town, or bear thing. Get that out of town. We don't want it. We don't want to see it. Who wants to be a cult, says Casey Morgan. Kind of not a big deal since Manning and Luck. So, last season, Casey, actually the last couple seasons, we have sat here behind our microphones, behind our screens, myself and BC Combs, It was mainly me, and I thought the Colts had a Super Bowl-caliber team. They were a quarterback away. What do they do? They bring in Phillip Rivers. All right. Next year, if it didn't work out, they bring in Matt Ryan. A couple years before that, they brought in Carson Wentz. So as Indianapolis... The dirtiest city itself. Oh, it's just a gross city. They do have a nice little river walk thing, which is awesome. If you guys get a chance to go to Indianapolis, definitely go down to the river walk with the shops and stuff. They close like at six o'clock because, you know, it gets bad in that town area. But with as Colt are not a ideal destination, right? Was the New York football Jets an ideal destination this time last year? Did you want to go be put on the mean green? Did you want to put on the green and white on your helmet? No. All it legitimately takes is one big name player to come to that team, to get traded to that team, to get drafted by that team, to make it a destination that you want to go to. Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets instantly made them 
a team that people wanted to go to. Tom Brady instantly made the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a team they wanted to go to. So with that being said, obviously the Colts do not have Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck anymore. They're not going to get Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or uh, Dak Prescott, you know, Pat, Patrick Mahomes. They are not going to get that big, high-profile quarterback to come to their team. But what they do have is a nice young rookie. They do have a nice young rookie by the name of Anthony Richardson that is going to have it, has his, have it up and downs this season. He is going to definitely have peaks and valleys, but they are going to be competitive. They are building for the future, right? They still have pieces in place to be a really, really good team. Jonathan Taylor might be one of those missing pieces. John, Jonathan Taylor, if I was... Chris Ballard, general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. I would sell that you are the missing piece for us to have a very successful season. The AFC South sucks. Let's just be honest. Jacksonville Jaguars, you can put them in the top 10 power rankings all you want. They were a 9-8 and eight team last year that had to beat, that had to win week 18 game versus the Tennessee Titans, versus a third-string quarterback that team had, hadn't won in seven weeks, and they barely beat them. That's who the Jacksonville Jaguars are. Tennessee Titans, 500 team all year. Houston Texans, better, but still not the team. The addition of Jonathan Taylor to the Indianapolis Colts, or bring him back and let him play, could literally make from a fourth-place team to a first-place team in the AFC South. That is how I would sell that to Jonathan Taylor. As as no free agent is coming to Indianapolis anytime soon, but sell that to Jonathan Taylor as you are our Aaron Rodgers. You are our Patrick Mahomes. You are our Tom Brady. You win the division. You get the rushing title. You do you people will want to come here and we will be successful and then we'll be able to pay you more money. That's how I would sell sell that Casey Morgan. I'm I'm sure that's not what you wanted to hear, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is. Let me see some more Jonathan Taylor stuff and then I'll get back into that New England Patriots thing, right? Uh, Combs says, it was a joke, by the way. Bears aren't getting Taylor. Speaking of destination that nobody wants to go to, Nobody wants to go to to Chicago until they build the Dome Stadium 15, 30 miles outside of Chicago. Nobody wants to live in Chicago. Nobody wants to travel to Chicago. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you like a brother. Uh, All right. So let's get back into this New England Patriot talk. There's a lot of comments about the New England Patriots, guys, about, about the whole... Mac Jones and issue, right? Uh, da, da, where did it start here? So, Hoffy right here says, Colt McCoy will not be in New England. Bailey Zappi will be quarterback too. So, we've done an after show on this guy, and we talked about this yesterday as well. Bailey Zappi, was released by the New England by the New England Patriots. Malik Cunningham was also released by the New England Patriots. The only quarterback that they have left on the roster right now is Mac Jones. Now, yesterday, they did sign Bailey Zappi back to the team as a practice squad player. So at any point in time, they could activate Bailey Zappi and he could be QB2. Right. Hoffy, you are spot on. He could be. However, any other team can pick up players off of the practice squad as like as well. Practice squad players are not like a safe haven. Like I'm going to put him on the back burner. Every NFL team has an opportunity to cherry pick any player they want off of their practice squad, off of other teams, practice squad. I should, should say. So if Bailey Zappi wants to be quarterback two at any point in the season, he's going to have to get activated. Because after week one, 
after week two, after week three, there are going to be injuries. It happens every year in the NFL. A big name player goes down. And then somebody gets cherry picked off of a practice squad and gets inserted into that role. Now, like I said, I don't ever wish ill will on anybody whatsoever. I don't want to see injuries. I want everybody to come out 100% healthy each and every week. But I'm a realist. I understand that that doesn't happen. There is going to be a quarterback that goes down. There is going to be a quarterback that misses five, six, seven, seven, seven weeks. With that being said, if a quarterback like Kirk Cousins goes down, if a quarterback like Jared Goff goes down, Baker Mayfield, Patrick Mahomes, Brock Purdy, Geno Smith, those six teams that I just named there, they will be reaching out to Bailey Zappi. They will be reaching out to the gunslinger himself because he fits those style of offenses. So the only way Bailey Zappi is going to be QB2, Hoffy, is if they activate him right now. They better get on it right now. Because Bailey Zappi is going to be a hot commodity. Hot commodity. Da, 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 da. Hoffy, Zappi was already cut and signed to the practice squad. They'll sign a veteran backup and bring Zappi along through the practice squad. Facts on facts on facts. Brandon Combs nailed it right there. Basically, guys, what Brandon B.C. Combs is saying right there is that the New England Pacers are going to sign Colt McCoy. They're going to train or train, train my man, Mac Jones, to be the guy. Combs, I, I feel like we've had a connection before. I feel like, you know, we're, we've, we've been on the same wavelength but be, 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 be for here. Da, 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 da. The White Sox of the NFL failing up. Got to go. Good shit as always, Buck. Reunion soon? Possibly, Combs. Always open for the after show, man. Every Tuesday and Friday, 10 p.m. East Coast time. Hoffy, a host of the after hour show. Come on. Talk your shit. Hell no, Combs. Go pound sand. Facts. Go pound that sand. See, see if you can beat it up. Uh, talking shit, talking shit, talking shit. Send message. Send message. Okay. Whatever that, that means. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Let's move on to the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengal stripes, orange and black. Hashtag rule the jungle. My man Joe Burrow returned to practice yesterday. We're throwing the ball around. He was kind of limited, yada, yada, yada. But we have to ask the question. Fact or crap, Joe Burrow came back too soon. So with that being said, guys, we talked on it yesterday. Coach Zach Taylor said, we don't know if Joe Burrow is going to practice this week or not. Two hours later, he's at practice. <laughs> we said, and I said, like I said yesterday, he had a calf strain. He's been out since July 21st or something like that. How long does it take to heal from a calf 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 strain? Kind of dogging the guy like 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 and like a little bit. And then I'm like, you know what? Maybe we don't know the the severity of the issue. Maybe he actually pulled a calf. Maybe he has a torn Achilles. Like maybe it's something more than what is just the people being said. Maybe it's more than a calf strain. Bada bing, bada boom, he, he's at our practice the very next day. So with that being said, guys, fact or crap, Joe Burrow came back too soon. This is a crap. This is a 100% crap. Joe Burrow is on a contract season. Joe Burrow knows the severity of this season. Yes, Jamar Say said, uh, don't come back till week five. Make sure you're fully 100% healthy. We're, we're, we're going to make a long postseason run. Joe Burrow knows how valuable he is to the Cincinnati Bengals and their success of the 2023 season. Now, let's say Joe Burrow wasn't able to play 
this season. And their backup quarterback, what is his name? Their backup quarterback, Jake Brownie, has to come in and lead the Bengals. Are the Bengals going to be terrible? No, they'll be a seven-win team. But Joe Burrow gives them that extra five wins. Joe Burrow puts them at the 12, 13, 14 win, win range. And it starts week one in Cleveland when they play the Browns. So, so guys, this is crap that uh, Joe Burrow came back too soon. His agent has been in his, his ear. The coaching staff has been in his ear. His baby mama has been in his ear. His mama has been in his ear. Everybody has had their opinion, and it's all been the same. Joe, you are about to make life-changing money. You are about to make franchise, sorry, generational wealth. You are about to be the richest quarterback in the NFL. Come back when you're ready. No need to rush. We're here for you, man. Yes, we may not be a 13-win team without you, but what we're we can hold our own. We can tread, we can tread water till you're 100. Guys, Joe Burrow knew exactly what he was doing. Took his sweet ass time, took him over a month to come back from a calf strain. He wasn't going to play in preseason anyways. Hell, he probably wasn't even going to practice. They can't afford to lose that man because they got Super Bowl aspirations. 100% crap that Joe Burrow came back too, too, too soon. People out there that think that, sh- shut up. Shut up with that. Casey says, with Joe Burrow and Mahomes being in the spotlight as the lead QBs in the league, do you think Josh Allen's spotlight has a chance that the Super Bowl is over? So we were actually going to talk about this, about the Super Bowl window for the Buffalo Bills closing Casey. So I'm glad you brought this up. So when we look at Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, right, they all kind of share the spotlight per se, right? Now, it was Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson exploded off the screen. And then came Josh Allen. And then came Patrick Mahomes. And then came Joe Burrow. And now they're all kind of like, you know, no, I'm number one. No, I'm number one. Like, I I feel like they're consistently going up and down, right? So as far as Super Bowl window, Super Bowl chances for Josh Allen and the boys is over, the Buffalo Bills window is definitely closing, right? Right? Two years ago was probably one of their best opportunities, right? Tyreek Hill uh, was playing for a contract, right? Patrick Mahomes was forcing Tyreek Hill the ball over and over and over. Joe Burrow was just coming off of the injury. We didn't know really how good Jamar Chase and those boys were going to be. Uh, Lamar Jackson obviously shit the bed, right? They had all the parts in place. They had all all the pieces in place. Obviously, 13 seconds, yada, yada, yada. That was their prime time to win the Super Bowl. Flash forward a couple years. Bengals go to the Super Bowl. Chiefs win another Super Bowl, right? On the other hand, other teams around the league are getting better. The Ravens have retooled. The Ravens could be a really good team this season. The Steelers are going to be a really good team this season. Cleveland Browns have all the parts and parts in place to be a really, really good team. Miami Dolphins are there. The Jets are there. So this is the one thing bad about the NFL is as general managers can plan four or five years down the road, hey, this guy's going to need, need, need a contract. This guy's going to need a contract. This guy's going to need a contract, right? The simple fact of the, of the matter is any given Sunday, anybody can win. That is what is so great about the, about the NFL. Literally, any given Sunday, anybody can win. So with that being said, yes, I do agree that the Super Bowl window for the Buffalo Bills has been closed. It's very, very slight right now. Stephon Diggs is not happy. Offensive coordinator has been cherry-picked to uh, the Giants, right? 
doing good things in New York. Defensive coordinator is gone, right? Still no running game. Yes, Josh Allen is still there. Stephon Diggs is still there. Von Miller, gone. Out. Pup list. Out for four weeks minimum. So, yes, the Super Bowl window for the Buffalo Bills is closing, and it's closing quickly. Because they did not capitalize when they had the chance. When they had the chance, they sh- could have at least made it to the Super Bowl. They could, they, could, they could have lost the Super Bowl, but that momentum of making it to the Super Bowl makes it easier to bring players in. Makes it easier to, you know, bring in that free agent. To makes it easier to bring in a Dalvin Cook. It makes it easier in to bring a Zeke Elliott, Litter Four, Fournette. Simple fact of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the matter is, is the Buffalo Bills shit the bed when they're at prime position to win a lot, a lot of games, and the window has now officially closed. Yes, I do agree, Casey. It is, it is, it is closed. It is over. Yada yada yada. Hoffy says, I think the Bills roster is past their prime, so they need to rebuild. Otherwise, third or fourth fiddle to the Dolphins, Bengals, and Chiefs. Buck is spot on. Now, when we look at the Buffalo Bills roster, it is getting older, getting a little wiser, right? The problem with the Buffalo Bills is they are a slinging the rock offense. They want to throw the ball 95% of the time and only run when they feel like, oh, it's third and long. Maybe we can sneak in a run and get a first down. The problem is, is they play in New York. The problem is, is when it snows, it snows like 25 feet. Can you really legitimately sling the rock all over if you're going to be playing in 25 feet of snow? That is the problem with the Buffalo Bills. They are built for warm weather. If you would take this Buffalo Bills team and insert them in L.A., Dallas, Miami, Tampa Bay. They might win a couple more playoff games. However, I said this on the After Hours show. There's a reason why a lot of teams like the Buffalo Bills, like the Chargers, David Chargers there, the Baltimore Ravens, other teams out there that are kind of San Francisco 49ers. There are teams out there that are kind of pass heavy offenses or run heavy offenses that kind of don't have that even balance. There's a reason why these one trick pony teams do not succeed in the playoffs. There is a reason why the Baltimore Ravens consistently lose in the playoffs. It is because Lamar Jackson is great at scrambling. He's great at extending the play. How do you beat them? Keep them in the pocket, force him to throw the ball 10 yards down the field. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, great at throwing the ball down the field, great at big plays, great at putting up 40 points a game. How do you beat them? Make them nickel and dime you down, down the field. San Francisco 49ers, great at running the ball. Pound that rock. What do you do? How do you beat them? Make them pass the ball. So, yes, the Buffalo Bills windows closed. The rosters past their prime. I mean, the... I wouldn't say the roster's past their prime. But the coach is past, their, past, is past his hype. How about that? The Buffalo Bills coach, uh, Sean McDermott, is past his hype. It is time to put up or shut up. Be in more balance. The Buffalo Bills need Jonathan Taylor. Huh. Who would you cut? Would you ki- cut... James Cook, Naheem Hines, Damian Harris, Latavius Murray. I'm not for sure if the Buffalo Bills could, like, get him a contract. Isn't Josh Allen making, like, $857 million a year? (laughs) I, I don't know. Now, just because you bring in Jonathan Taylor, David, it doesn't mean that they're going to use them. The problem with the Buffalo Bills is they have decent running backs. They just don't use them. They don't use them. That is the ultimate problem. But guys, that is going to be it for today. Join us tomorrow 
10 p.m. Sorry, 10 a.m. East Coast time. Right here on Facebook.com. Of course, YouTube.com. Guys, I love the interaction. Always keep it coming. I try to be live interactive. But this is live, raw, uncut sports talk, guys. Not sports talk. NFL talk. All NFL talk all the time. Head over to manarrow.com. Like, comment, subscribe. Share this with a couple friends. Have a great day. We out. Happy birthday, honey.